Hi, this is Dr. Richard Bernstein bringing you Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Our subject for today is going to be diets for weight gain and weight loss. Now, remember we're addressing the subject of diabetes, but when it comes to weight gain and weight loss, the same principles apply to non-diabetics. I've been doing this uh, with patients for more than 30 years, and I've seen thousands of patients, and it doesn't matter whether they're diabetic or not, the ball game is still the same. If you want to lose weight, you must be following a low carbohydrate diet. Low fat diets don't work. Uh, low calorie diets don't work. I'm not going to go into the science of it because I've done this on a previous session. But the uh, main thing is total elimination of simple sugars, which include starches, breads, uh, grains, uh, fruits, juices, uh, all the sweet stuff that you can buy in a bag uh, at the corner store. Uh, but there comes a time when you've achieved the weight loss that you seek. And here is where many other systems make a big mistake. They right away start giving people carbohydrate again so that they will not continue to lose weight. But what that does is reinstitutes the craving for carbohydrates, the desire for sweets, the addiction to carbohydrate. So what we do when we want to uh, put a halt to the weight loss, we've lost enough weight now, we increase the protein. Now, if you're a diabetic and taking insulin, you're going to have to increase the amount of insulin you take for a meal slightly to take into account the protein that you're bringing back into the meal plan. And uh, uh, there are crude formulas. Uh, for example, if you're not insulin resistant and overweight, uh, typically uh, one half unit of regular insulin, also called crystalline insulin, will cover about one ounce of protein. So that's a good starting point. You try it and see how it works, and uh, you can raise or lower the dose from that point. But uh, if you're taking insulin, you're going to need more insulin for the protein, for the greater amount of protein. If you're not taking insulin, you may or may not need an addition of another medication. It all depends what happens to your blood sugars. But don't, uh, if you're diabetic, don't expect to uh, be adding protein to your diet with no effect upon blood sugar. Although the effect is much smaller than a similar amount of carbohydrate, it still exists and you have to uh, cover it with some medication in most situations. Uh, so this is just a reminder that you don't bring back the carbo when you think you're losing too much weight. You add protein. And in some cases, especially with small children, uh, adding more protein uh, to the existing, let's say, three meals may be too much for a little kid to eat in one uh, sitting. So we add snacks. And at the snacks, we still have to cover the protein within the new protein with insulin. So there are lots of ways to play the game, but you don't go back to increasing carbohydrate. Uh, that will bring high blood sugars, uh, loss of muscle mass, because you're going to be uh, converting uh, not only your dietary protein to glucose, but also your body's protein to glucose, peeing it away in your urine, and in effect, converting your muscles to sugar water if you bring back carbohydrate. Uh, that's 
the picture. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we'll see you at another session. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site askdrbernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so askdrbernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.